ISM. It's short for International Safety Management, and it's the operational standard for the worldwide shipping community. Beneath these three letters lie hundreds and hundreds of complex rules and regulations. In this program, you'll receive a clear, easy to understand overview of the most up-to-date ISM regulations. We'll break down the responsibilities of the company, the master, and the crew to ensure full ISM compliance. We'll also talk about the necessary components of an ISM Compliance Safety Management System, or SMS. By the end of this video, you'll have the information you need for you and your company to pass periodic inspections. And you'll understand why ISM matters and what these general regulations are doing to help promote a better and safer maritime community. Before the ISM code went into effect, incidents at sea were much more difficult to prevent and to manage. The IMO first adopted the ISM code in 1993 to provide a baseline of standards for the safe operation of vessels worldwide. ISM has three major objectives. Ensuring safety at sea, the prevention of injury and loss of life, and the avoidance of damage to the marine environment and to property. To meet these objectives, companies that own or operate vessels should, at a minimum, provide for safe shipboard practices in a safe working environment, establish safeguards against known risks, and continually improve their preparedness for handling emergency situations and protecting the environment. Does the ISM apply to you? If you operate or work on a passenger ship, oil tanker, chemical tanker, gas or bulk carriers, cargo ship, or mobile offshore drilling unit of 500 gross tonnage and upwards, then the answer is yes. The ISM defines a series of specific responsibilities for companies operating these vessels. First, a company is required to draft its own safety and environmental protection policy and required to ensure that this policy is being implemented and maintained at all levels on both ship and shore. The company must define and document the responsibilities of all personnel and provide adequate resources to carry out their designated safety functions. To further ensure the safe operation of every ship, the company should also designate a person or persons ashore having direct access to the highest levels of company management. The DPA is the direct link between the company and those on board. Companies should develop formal written plans for shipboard operations and a maintenance schedule, ensuring that inspections are held at regular intervals, nonconformities are reported, corrective action is taken, and records are kept. Record keeping and documentation are a must in the ISM standards. Any documents relevant to the ship's SMS should be available in all locations. Documents must be reviewed by authorized personnel before any changes are made. Lastly, a company is responsible for the training and familiarization of its crew. This means any new personnel or transferred personnel must be given proper familiarization with their duties before work can commence. Some of this familiarization will take place prior to sailing. Some of it will take place on board. The company should identify any necessary training that may be required for certain tasks and ensure that such training is provided. A ship's master has a set of specific responsibilities, such as oversee the implementation of the safety and environmental protection policy, motivate the crew, issue orders and instructions clearly, verify all requirements are being observed, and finally, the master must conduct a complete review of the ship's SMS annually and report any problems to shore-based management. The company should work to determine that the master is qualified for command, conversant with the safety management system, and given all necessary support to perform their job. Last but not least, Crew members have responsibilities of their own in order to maintain full ISM compliance. Seafarers are required to be able to demonstrate an awareness of their duties as well as how to carry them out safely and effectively. 
to be qualified, certified, medically fit, and fully conversant with the ship's SMS. This means that crew members should receive information in the ship's working language, a language they can understand, and they must be able to communicate effectively while performing their duties, as specified by the safety management system. What is an SMS? A safety management system refers to the comprehensive set of guidelines designed to implement the company's safety and environmental protection policy. There are six required components of an SMS, including a working safety and environmental protection policy, as previously discussed, a set of instructions and procedures to ensure the ship's safe operation in accordance with both international and flag state legislation. These should be contained in a company's normal procedures manual, with which all company and crew should be familiar. The procedures manual should also contain defined levels of authority, including specified lines of communication between shipboard personnel and shore. An ISM compliant SMS must contain official written procedures for the reporting of accidents and non-conformities with the ISM code as well as documented emergency preparedness and response procedures describing the steps to take in the event of an emergency on board. Lastly, there must be documented and official procedures for conducting mandatory internal audits of a vessel's compliance with the ISM code, and regular management reviews to ensure that the three objectives of the ISM code, safety at sea, preventing loss of life, and protecting the marine environment and property, are met to the utmost ability. To verify ISM compliance, two important documents must be kept on board at all times. A copy of the ship's document of compliance, as well as its safety management certificate. The document of compliance, or DOC, will be issued to every company that complies with the full breadth of the ISM regulations. The safety management certificate, or SMC, will be issued after onboard verification of a vessel's safety management system, or SMS. Both are valid for a period of not exceeding five years and are checked through periodic audits. The effectiveness and compliance of your ship will be verified by both internal and external audits. The companies are required to conduct internal audits to verify that its safety and pollution prevention activities comply with the SMS. Internal audits should follow a planned checklist. They should always be documented and timely corrective action should be taken in the event of a non-conformity or non-compliance. Internal audits are the best way for a company and crew to prepare for mandatory external audits. There are two basic types of audits that will occur, DOC audits and SMC audits. For a document of compliance to be renewed, a DOC audit will take place at the company's principal place of business prior to the date of expiry of the company's official document of compliance. During this audit, the auditor may examine the company's safety management manual, interview members of the staff, ask to see objective evidence including records, logs, and reports, and he or she will also want to observe the working practices of the company. Though the DOC is valid for a period of up to five years, it is subject to annual verification to ensure compliance. The other kind of audit, the SMC audit, takes place on board a ship. During an SMC audit, the auditor will likewise want to review documentation, including internal audit records, and observe safe working practices. Between the second and third anniversary of the issuance of an SMC, an intermediate audit of the SMS will be conducted. During the intermediate audit, the auditor will ask to review the ship's safety management system to make sure all policies and procedures are ISM compliant. He or she will want to see objective evidence that the SMS has been functioning effectively over a specified period of time. The auditor will then take a brief inspection of the ship to look for any non-conformities and to ensure that any new amendments made since the previous verification are being adhered to. After an audit, either internal or external, General nonconformities must be corrected within a specified period of time. If a major nonconformity is found, 
defined as a lack of effective or systematic implementation of an ISM code that results in a serious threat to safety, the SMC will be revoked and along with it, your license to the open seas. If you can present clear evidence of SMS compliance and effectiveness, your ship will pass. The auditor's job is to ensure that a ship's safety practices meet ISM requirements and that all personnel are trained and familiar with the safe completion of their assigned tasks. In this program, we've given you an overview of the standards of International Safety Management, or ISM, including the objectives of the ISM code, the responsibilities of the company, master, and crew, the six necessary components of an SMS, including a safety and environmental protection policy, a set of instructions and procedures to carry out this policy, clearly defined levels of authority. This includes masters, officers, and crew reporting procedures for accidents and non-conformities, emergency preparedness and response procedures, and procedures for internal audits and management reviews. We've also gone over two important certificates of ISM code compliance you'll need, the document of compliance and the safety management certificate. And finally, we talked about both internal and external audits and what an auditor will request to see from both company and crew to verify full compliance with ISM code. ISM standards bring us closer to reaching what should be our number one goal, to create a better and safer maritime community for all.